Welcome to the Healing Pain Podcast with Dr. Joe Tata. Each week, we interview top experts in physical therapy, pain science, and integrative pain care. You'll learn the most up-to-date information for treating and reversing persistent pain. This podcast is for educational purposes only and not intended to be used as personalized medical advice. And now, here's your host, Dr. Joe Tata. Hey there, friends. Welcome to this week's episode of the Healing Pain Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Joe Tata. As always, it's a pleasure to be spending this time with you. I'm especially excited to talk to you today because today marks the launch of my latest book called Radical Relief, A Guide to Overcome Chronic Pain. And that book is based on the founding principles of pain neuroscience education, mindfulness and acceptance and commitment therapy for the treatment of chronic pain. It's available today on Amazon. You can find it in most countries. They'll deliver it right to your doorstep. But I really want to tell you why I wrote the book, what it's about, and how you can use it, whether you're someone who struggles with pain or whether you're a practitioner who's treating chronic pain in your clinic. As many of you know, the focus of the work I do at the Integrated Pain Science Institute is to provide evidence-based treatment for chronic pain. I do engage a little bit of pain research. This year, I was lucky enough to be a part of a team that discussed how nutrition can be used to treat chronic pain. And I also train professionals on how to use biopsychosocial interventions for the treatment of pain. Now, about four years ago, my first book came out, which is called Heal Your Pain Now. And that book really took an integrative or multimodal approach for the treatment of chronic pain. There's a part of that book that focuses on diet and nutrition. There's a part of that book that focuses on exercise and physical activity. And there's a part of that book that focuses on what I call the brain and pain. And many people engage with that book, both professionals as well as people living with pain. They've learned a lot. They've been able to implement some healthy exercise and physical activity. They have changed their diet and they learned a lot about the influence of the mind or the brain with regard to chronic pain. Now, with any book, there are limitations. That book I wrote was actually probably about, it's about 340 pages. So that's a big book. It's a big book to digest, whether you're a practitioner or whether you're someone living with pain. So the challenge I have with that book is I kind of wrote about the brain and pain or about the mind in a way that was a little more didactic. So I gave people information, but I didn't really give them how-to information because I I literally couldn't fit it in the book. The publisher gave me a a word count and a page limit. So I had to dial that down. But what developed from that first book, and I've received many emails and instant message requests on social media, was more. I want to learn more about the brain and pain. I want to learn more about the mind. I want to learn more about mindfulness and acceptance and commitment therapy, which was mentioned in that first book. But I really feel it deserved its own time in the sun. And to really talk about those techniques and those methods and to give people good take home. So that's how the evolution of my second book came about. So my book really first and foremost is written for physical therapists and how they can start to take principles of mindfulness and acceptance and commitment therapy and use it in clinical practice. It's definitely useful if you're, let's say, a mental health professional, a social worker or a counselor or a psychologist, or maybe you're a physician or a nurse, and you're interested in learning more, but it really starts to look at pain and the psychosocial variables and say, okay, how can I implement this into practice, no matter what type of licensed health professional I am? So as I mentioned before, this is an evidence-based approach for the treatment of pain using the brain and the mind, if you will. And it focuses on three key aspects, pain neuroscience education, mindfulness, and acceptance and commitment therapy. And it follows the best evidence we have now with regard to the psychological approaches for the treatment of pain. And that is combining pain education, some form of cognitive behavioral therapy, which ACT is, ACT is a form of cognitive behavioral therapy, and then some type of physical activity engagement. So how much of each do you get in this book is even those three topics are a lot to digest. I look at this like kind of like an ice cream sundae. So the base of the ice cream sundae is acceptance and commitment therapy. So this book is deeply rooted in acceptance and commitment therapy. On top of that, there's a little bit of whipped cream. I look at that whipped cream as mindfulness. And then on top of that whipped cream, there's the cherry on top. And the cherry on top is pain education. So what that means, if you're looking at the table of contents, the first two chapters are based on pain education. 
And then the rest of the book is based on acceptance and commitment therapy. And part of ACT or part of acceptance and commitment therapy is mindfulness. I also have some traditional mindfulness exercises in here. I believe they fit very well with a psychologically informed approach to, uh, to pain that can be used easily by physical therapists or other licensed health professionals. Now, I mentioned the book has approximately 30 something chapters to be exact. It has 36 chapters. And that can be a little off-putting both for people with pain as well as practitioners because it sounds like a lot to read. But I wanna kind of drill this one point home is this book is only 100 pages. It's a workbook. And I specifically wrote this to be a short, concise workbook and guide because unlike my first book, which was 350 pages, people don't want, people with pain don't want to sift through 350 pages to figure out, okay, what is, what's the cause of my pain and what can I do to help myself? So that's the first reason why I wrote a short, concise guide and workbook for the treatment of chronic pain. And the second is even for practitioners, we don't have the time necessarily to sift through 350 pages. So I've made this short and concise for the professional as well. So even though there's 36 chapters, each chapter is only between two to three pages maximum. And then within each chapter, there's somewhere between one to three cognitive or mental skills training exercises that you can employ right now today, whether you're someone living with pain or whether you're a practitioner who wants to take this back to the clinic and use it with your patient. So by the end of the book, you're presented with over 50 cognitive and mindfulness type exercises you can use for the treatment of chronic pain. So what I'm really trying to say is that the, the book was designed to be useful. It was designed to be um, approachable. And I really have left out any of the technical jargon and theory. If you're a practitioner and you're interested in that, I did include a section in the beginning of the book, which is called a guide for professionals and how you can embrace the ACT model for pain. And in that chapter, which is a little bit longer, I do go into the foundational theories and principles of acceptance and commitment therapy, specifically the psychological flexibility model and the core processes and what that really means. Now, those psychological skills and processes are present in every single chapter throughout the book. I just don't point them out uh, specifically because I want you to be able to move through the book in a way that's fluid. By the time you get to the end of the book, you have will have gone through a little bit of pain neuroscience education. So we work on the reconceptualization of pain and you'll gone through all the different types of processes and exercises with regard to acceptance and commitment therapy. So once you order this book and it's available on Amazon, you can uh, find the link on Amazon. If you just go to Amazon and put in radical relief, uh, Joe Tata, it should come right up. Here's how I recommend you approach this book. Even though it's smaller, even though it's only a hundred pages, there's still deep, profound knowledge and training within the pages of this book. Now with that, this is not the type of book that you sit down and you read in one sitting on a Saturday, let's say starting at nine o'clock in the morning and finishing, you know, six o'clock in the evening. I really recommend that you set aside a little bit of time each day to read one, maybe two chapters at the most. And then once you're finished reading the chapter, at the end of the chapter, like I said, there's either one or two exercises in there. Take the time to actually experience the exercise yourself. Experience that exercise, whether you're someone who's living with pain or whether you're a practitioner and you're interested in learning more. And that's probably one of the most important parts of this book because ACT and mindfulness are an experiential approach to pain. You have to experience it in your mind you have to experience it in your body and you have to experience it in your soul for this to really take root and for it to work. So when you receive the book, if you're someone who's living with pain, what I recommend you do is read the introduction. If you're a professional and you receive the book, go right to the guide for professionals. And then once you've done that, set aside time where you can read one chapter per day. And if you work through it one chapter per day, it'll probably take you about a month to complete the book. Now that's not very long because if you went through a course of physical therapy or if you went through a course of let's say psychology or you work with a social worker or anyone else, it'll take you at least a month to work through the protocols they're working on with you. So in essence, you can look at this like a protocol that's specific 
on how to use the mind to overcome chronic pain. And since I mentioned the word protocol, I'll just turn and focus on the practitioners and researchers for a moment. Because this builds off the um, core psychological skills of psychological flexibility, those core processes, you can use this for individual treatment. You can use this for um, group treatment or group pro programming, whether that's online or offline. You can also use this book to develop your own protocol if you want to, let's say, run a randomized controlled trial or use it in uh, clinical research. As you read the book, you'll be able to see how I work in cognitive diffusion and acceptance, self as context and present moment awareness. And then at the very end of the book, I work in values and committed action. So that's the way the book transitions. If you're familiar with the ACT model, you'll be able to recognize that and notice that as you work through the book. As some of you know, I do have a, a program where you can learn ACT for chronic pain online at the Integrated Pain Science Institute. But I've given this copy, a couple of uh, people from the graduates from my program have received early advanced copies. They've read this and I know they've started to use this in clinical practice already. So this is being used as a tool in a number of different clinical settings. And over the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be rolling out an entire Radical Relief podcast series where I interview researchers, professionals, and academics who are using the principles of this book, who are using pain neuroscience education, mindfulness and acceptance and commitment therapy, either in their practice, in their research or in academia. And I wanna take the time now to mention these professionals by name and to give you a sneak peek of what they'll be talking about on the upcoming episode. So on January 6th, we have Adrian Lowe, who'll be talking about pain neuroscience education plus, followed by physiotherapist Davide Lanfranco. He's an Italian physiotherapist who now lives in the UK, who uses ACT and combines it with physiotherapy in an outpatient orthopedic setting, followed by physical therapist Mary Doyle, who is a physical therapist in the state of Delaware and combines her physical therapy practice with principles of acceptance and commitment therapy. And she delivers that to a very specific patient population where she works with prisoners who are in jail. So a really important population that can benefit from the psychosocial skills training. Then we have Professor Annette Wilgins, who is a professor of physical therapy. She uses mindfulness and she teaches mindfulness to her physical therapy students, followed by ACT psychologist Lillian Dindo, who is using ACT in the form of a one day um, ACT workshop. Really important information there that I encourage people to access and listen to. Physiotherapist Mary Grant, who is in Ireland, she combines cognitive functional therapy with acceptance and commitment therapy. And then physiotherapist and pain researcher, Javier Martinez Calderon, who researches the psychological factors related to chronic pain. So that's just a sneak peek of who is coming up on this Radical Relief podcast series, all focused on how we can use the mind and mental skills training to overcome chronic pain. Over the next couple of weeks, as we build out the Radical Relief podcast series, you'll meet these academics, researchers, and clinicians who are using the principles of the book and in essence, the book in clinical practice. So really my biggest aim with this book is that this book becomes your clinical companion in either your practice or in research or in academia, where you can help train those that you know or help introduce those that you know to these really solid foundational principles of behavior change that can be found in ACT and pain education and mindfulness as well. As you move into the last chapter of the book, I outline a model or a framework, if you will, of what I believe we should be teaching people as well as other practitioners about chronic pain and how to help them overcome chronic pain. And that framework is what I call the MOVE principle or the MOVE approach, if you will. So MOVE is an acronym and it stands for make room for unpleasant sensations, open up and observe non-judgmentally, values guide life, not pain. And then finally the E, which is engage in activities in line with your values. So M-O-V-E. So I'll say that one more time. Move, make room for unpleasant sensations, O, open up and observe non-judgmentally. V, values guide life, not pain. And then E, engage in activities in line with your values. And I really believe that these are the conditions we need to create, the conditions that are necessary to help people thrive with or without chronic pain, because oftentimes pain may decide to kind of arc back and come back around. But if we continue 
to train these principles, I believe this is the most effective way that we can help people right now based on, based on the research and based on the literature that we have. Now, I'll be running my ACT course again throughout the year if you're a professional and you want to learn more about acceptance and commitment there before the treatment of chronic pain. I also have a new program which is coming out in just a couple days. It's called Mindfulness-Based Pain Relief. It does use the principles of this book with regard to how you can use mindfulness in clinical practice. And then finally, for those who live with chronic pain, I have a new online program that's coming out. And the name of that program is called Relief. It's an online mindfulness meditation program that'll help you alleviate your pain and suffering. So I'm really excited to be rolling those three online programs out. But to be honest with you, my goal with this book, as it was with the first book, is that you read it and you take the knowledge and you go forward and you share this with your friends and family and acquaintances and colleagues so we can really start to spread the word of how to use safe and effective treatments for chronic pain. So you can use the book individually. Let's say if you're a practitioner and you're working with a group of other practitioners, I think it's a great book to order for your colleagues. And you can even use it for like an in-service or maybe even a book club where you go through each chapter and maybe discuss them um, at an in-service or discuss them amongst yourselves. And of course, start to use the information with people and help them overcome their pain. So I just wanted to share that overview with you today. I know many of you have ordered the book already. I really appreciate those of you that have ordered it. It has been at the number one spot in chronic pain on Amazon. So I'm really excited about that, that people are accessing this book. Should you have any questions or comments about the book, I'd love to hear from you. You can email me. I'll give you the email address of the Institute. So that email address is support at integrativepainscienceinstitute.com. That's support at integrativepainscienceinstitute.com. I'd love to hear your feedback. And if you like the book, make sure to hop on Amazon, give me a five-star review and say something nice about the book so people can access it and they can stay in that number one spot on Amazon and chronic pain. I'd love to have more professionals as well as people who are living with pain access this great book. It, it is a book about chronic pain, but just know that chronic pain overlaps with many other types of conditions and disorders, especially those that are related to stress, depression, anxiety, trauma, and addiction, which is a big factor for those living with chronic pain who have not been provided with appropriate care. So this book is useful for the other comorbid conditions or collinear conditions that people living with chronic pain often face. And just to wrap up, I wanna thank all of the professionals who have kind of inspired me over the years to continue doing what I'm doing, especially many of the pain researchers, the pain physiotherapists and the pain psychologists that are discussing topics like I included here in Radical Relief I especially want to thank Stephen Hayes, who gave me a nice testimonial for the back of the book and supported the work and who has always supported me in this work and has been a distant mentor um, of mine throughout the years and has encouraged me to continue to use this work for the treatment of, of pain and to encourage physiotherapists to use it as well. So I want to thank Stephen. After reading this book, hopefully you'll feel encouraged to use the topics of pain education, mindfulness, and of course, acceptance and commitment therapy in your practice. Again, I'd love to hear your feedback. You can send me an email and please give me that five-star review on Amazon. I really appreciate it if you find the book useful. Okay, we'll have a lot more about the book and the topic as we go into January and into February. Make sure you stay tuned. You can join the mailing list by going to the IntegrativePainScienceInstitute.com. That's the IntegrativePainScienceInstitute.com and sign up for the mailing list so you can stay up to date on all I'm doing at the Institute. Okay, I'm Dr. Joe Tata. As always, it's been a pleasure spending time with you. I wish all of you much love and success in the new year in 2021, especially with regard to overcoming chronic, chronic pain. Make sure to share this episode with your friends and family on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn, wherever anyone's talking about how to use the mind to overcome chronic pain. Wish you well, and I'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to the Healing Pain Podcast with Dr. Joe Tata. To subscribe to the podcast and learn more, visit IntegrativePainScienceInstitute.com. That's IntegrativePainScienceInstitute.com. Sign up to receive weekly updates, leave a review on iTunes, and share this episode with your friends.